X apparently cried when she heard some of the comments on my posts. Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel Ara Zone Stories. Today we have a story where this woman suddenly left her boyfriend and literally ghosted him. Later when she tried to contact with him, he just ignored her. Let's see what actually happened. We met five years ago, been together for the last three of those years. The first two were spent just casually dating. I love this girl. We do have arguments a little more frequently lately, but that's because my insecurity lately. See, about a year ago, I was going through a death in the family, and I wasn't able to be there for her. We decided to take a break for a few weeks, mutual decision, and for me to get my head on straight. We talked often during those weeks, nothing deep, as we wanted to give each other space. Weeks after we got back together, after I pressed, found out she started flirting with a co-worker, went out a couple of times, went down on him too. She showed me the texts. We worked through it, but I've always felt insecure as they see each other every day. Recently, a few days ago we had a fight. We'd made plans and she cancelled the day off. Cool, right. So I say okay. She has a habit of doing so last minute, and it annoys me but whatever. So later, we talk. I ask how her day was, etc. She sends me a few pictures, and I see a restaurant in the background. When we meet later, I ask her about who she was with, and she doesn't exactly answer. But after taking it upon myself to look through her texts, I see a conversation with same co-worker talking about having lunch together at a very unique type of restaurant, the same that was in the background. I was so mad. I asked if it was him, and she repeatedly said no. I left, went home. I woke up and saw I was blocked everywhere. I decided not to bother her, as we both needed time to calm down. Today I decided to look at her FB through someone else's account. It says she's in a relationship. Co-worker's account says the same. For context, when we were together, she never once put in a relationship, but I didn't care. It's only Facebook. Suddenly, her and co-worker who showed single are now both in relationships. I'm going crazy. I've messaged her friends and everyone she knows who I do, but no one is responding. What do I do? I can't work, I can't eat or sleep. If she broke up with me, I'd be okay, but she just chose to do it in such a way, I need answers. I need someone to tell me what's going on. I feel like I'm starting to come off as a crazy person, but what am I supposed to do? Edit, her friend just responded. She's dating the other guy. So yeah, five years gone. I've just blocked everyone she knows. I don't think I want to see anymore. Thanks, everyone. Been over a week since I found out my ex-GF and best friend of five years had been having a long-term affair with her co-worker. First thing is first. You people saved my life. I admit, I was having very dark thoughts during those first few days, and the words and sentiments of you Reddit folk helped me trudge along. I still come on to read your words when my resolve wavers. You guys saved my life. Thank you. I finally told my family and friends. Some of them knew already as our friend groups were sort of blended after five years. To say my mother was hurt was an understatement. She loved my ex, thought I'd marry her. I'd taken your advice and just went completely silent. I purged my house of everything that reminded me of her, everything she got me, or left here packed it into boxes and asked one of my friends to deliver it to one of hers. I wanted to be proactive, couldn't sit still. When my friend got back, he told he gave her friend an earful about how I'd been treated. I didn't ask him to. Apparently she was apologetic. She supposedly didn't know my ex cheated. Yeah, right. I think she just doesn't want to look bad now that it's coming out X is a cheater. No way, she didn't know. But whatever. Yesterday a blank random FB pro messaged me. Hi, me. I got the stuff from Talia. I get you're probably mad at me. I get that I messed up by not breaking up sooner before things happened. But I think it's really cruel of you to tell people our business and even return things I got you as gifts. They were meant for you. There is no reason to be so ugly about everything. This is exactly why I did not say anything. I really think, me just disappearing will help you move on faster. There's no reason for it. One day, I hope we could both look back on our relationship fondly as something that helped us become better people. I hope you can reach that point in yourself. Ignored and blocked. She can go away. I've got my appetite back. I still have moments where I just can't help but break down but I feel anger more than anything else. I'm burying myself in work, and most of my interactions with people involves a good deal of faking it, but I'll get there someday. What worries me is my anger. It's easier to just vent here. 
Here I won't get looked on with pity or tiptoed around. Thank you guys. Wow how lucky you are. Wow how can any sane person send that message? You know what in your case her partner is the looser. It's coming for him. Get yourself in therapy. Good stuff on telling all friends they should know the truth. The fact she messaged back is telling. I have a feeling. She was still waiting whether she wanted to branch or not. Then you caught her. Then she had the swing. And now this I expected you to take my abuse and be a better person. You did not reply awesome. You got the golden handshake here. Believe me life will be much better for you if you stick to your resolve. You have supporting family. No joint property. No kids. Supportive friends and all of us. We have a tendency to create greatness here. People come on here broken. We mold them and guide them to a better fuller life. But you're strong. You're doing the right thing. Hit the gym. One last thing. Her message tells me this is not the end. Work on yourself. Work hard and with purpose. Somewhere her glass house will break. Then she will reset to where she was last happy. My cheater did. Most of them go back to try again. Prepare for that. Indifference should be your reply. Thus zero emotion. Your goal is to be absolutely without emotion when she comes round. You're doing great. Keep busy. Get hobbies. Better yourself. When ready rinse and recycle and get back in the dating game. Just think if this happened after marriage with years invested children. Now, a few days ago my dad passed away. Somehow, she found out. On social media, I have received such an outpouring of support from my friends, and some of them are friends with her friends. My friends already know not to talk to me about her or share anything about me with her or her friends. I'm not too phased. It's on social media, so she was bound to find out eventually. My mother is broken. X, who has been blocked by my mother and family, decides to text my mother her condolences. She goes so far as to imply that being the caring person she is, she'd like to offer my mother her support and attend the funeral, guess who with. If you guess a fair partner, then you're right. Why? Because he will support her while she's supporting my mother. This really repressing. Because my mom loved her and they were close until she cheated. Mom didn't bother responding. She just told me what happened, told me she doesn't want her there or to reach out again, and will leave it to me to handle it, because she doesn't want unnecessary drama after all this. Now, I have no choice to confront her. I also know confronting her is giving her exactly what she wants. She'll be able to say I'm the one reaching out to her. What should I do? What should I say? I have not dealt with it yet but I plan to. Edit. She actually did say that she wants to offer my mother support without risk of hostility from me. Yeah, because ignoring her is an attack on her apparently. Thank you all so much for your condolences. I'd have loved to answer each one of you individually. Thank you all from the bottom of mine and the family's hearts. I took all your advice into consideration. At the end of the day, regardless of the harsh way I personally want to put my ex in her place, I think I see things my mother's way. I don't want any sort of conflict, or ill will, or cruel words spoken about the circumstances in, which I'm putting dad to rest. I just want peace until after the funeral. I decided I'll not respond to her in any way. I've also spoken to my family through the group to tell them about what happened. Understandably many were angry, and wanted to rip her a new one. I pleaded with them to restrain themselves, that we needed to stand in solidarity, and agree we will all meet her attempts with complete silence and to also set as much as possible on their profiles to private, in case she's creeping. I got I think all of them to agree that if she reaches out to them, we'll just ignore and block as many times as necessary. Won't even acknowledge she exists. Everyone's so protective of me now, so there's a new unity to the family that's really humbling. I'll speak to the funeral personnel about the ex to make sure in case she does show up, she'll be turned away. I'll go to the police station tomorrow to at least inform them just in case. Maybe they can advise me as well. If a restraining order is my only recourse, I'll take steps in that direction. Lastly, when I told my friends about it, they weren't surprised. Turns out, X is posting about being devastated by the loss of Uncle Dad's name or some such nonsense. And she is soaking up the pity like a leech. My friends had already agreed amongst themselves to keep this under wraps to not stress me out. They volunteered to be spokesmen and spread the word to literally everyone that she isn't welcome and that we'll have security to keep her out if need be. They'll also run interference for me the whole day of. I was really touched. They insisted on it that I should just focus on my mom and they'll take care of everything to do with her. 
I told them I don't even want to hear anything until after the funeral. Right now my priority is making sure my mom isn't affected by anything else. I'm staying with her until the funeral. She's a really religious woman, so she doesn't want to be too harsh with the ex and says she's forgiven her, or is trying to, so the best she can do is continue to just ignore her. I'll update after the burial I think. Thanks for showing me not to react emotionally. God bless. This girl is a total narcissist. Her concern and offering of support to your mom was inappropriate given her current status with you and your family. If there's anyone she should have tried to give condolences to, it should have been you first and foremost. If she truly wanted to pay her respects to your family, she should have done it humbly and quietly by sending some flowers, which shows respect while maintaining some boundaries. Instead, she texts your grieving mother and has the nerve to try and use your father's funeral that she was not invited to, in order to make an appearance and flaunt the affair partner in your face while you mourn the loss of your dad with your family. That is unbelievably cruel. For her to even think that, her support was wanted or needed, and that bringing the AP to your father's funeral was the right course of action, tells me that this girl has a major sense of entitlement, and a total lack of empathy. She's willing to bring drama to you, on what quite possibly could be one of the hardest and more memorable days of your life. That's unconscionable, and literally dumbfounded by her impudence. Definitely remain no contact with this nutcase. How can you make sure that she doesn't come to the funeral? I don't really have any suggestions for you, but I definitely think that it needs to be made clear to her somehow that she's not wanted nor invited. I'm so sorry for your loss. I lost my father 10 years ago, and we had a beautiful service for him celebrating his life with close friends and family. That's the type of memory you want to have when you look back years from now. I would hate to see your ex take that away from you in any way. You are in my thoughts. Wasn't going to post another update, but so many who've weighed in have asked for one, so here I am. My dad's funeral service was beautiful. One of his close friends asked if he could put up the time and location on his social media, so my dad's friends out of state could see and attend and they did. Fortunately, I did not hear a peep from X in the days leading up to it, and I didn't care to. Her parents did attend, though. They didn't stay long, and they mostly spoke with my mom. But I hovered around her the whole day just in case. Not a word mentioned about my ex. They were cordial with me, and I didn't get the sense they were unhappy with me. But they had the tact not to talk about anything else. Was sweet honestly. In the last few days, I've gotten a few friend requests from people in X's camp, but I ignored it. Yesterday, my friend, same guy I asked to return her stuff, shows me a message from Talia that is basically spewing hate my way. I'm immature, pathetic, trying to make my ex's life miserable. I'm shaming her. I'm not who she thought I was, how at the end of the day I'm just bitter etc. I don't understand as I've done literally nothing to this woman, and as I'm not talking to Talia, I ask him to extract what this is all about, and she sends him a screenshot of a YouTube video shared by one of our shared friends to her. I guess he consumes this type of content on YouTube, and he found my story. Honestly, I don't mind, it just felt weird. It was my dad's funeral and posting the FB message that named Talia that gave me away, fake name, but I posted the message word for word. He particularly loved the comments dressing her down, and in an act of pettiness, I guess decided to send the video to Talia captioned, sound familiar. Why he didn't tell me first I don't know. Didn't take long for it to reach X, and holy moly, out of curiosity, I decided to accept one or two of the friend requests, and yup, this is why. I've gotten pages of drivel calling me abusive for not having the courage to face the woman I'm besmirching, but dragging her name through in cell echo chambers, and how X is beside herself that I not only denied her the opportunity to say bye to uncle, my dad, but talked openly enough about her private business that it's trickling into her workmate's conversation. That is if that isn't bad enough, I'm psychologically attacking her by encouraging strangers on the internet to bash her. Her accusations honestly got under my skin, and I responded only to ask what about the post wasn't true. Tried to explain that I first made that post in a moment of immense emotional upheaval and panic, and I just needed advice from people who suffered through the same. But I did not reveal anything to expose her or myself to strangers, but she was adamant. Told me my ex apparently cried when she heard some of the comments, and that her new BF wants to settle things with me. Made me laugh a little to be honest. That the least I could do is reach out to my ex and apologize to her. 
that if I have unresolved issues, my ex is willing to have a sit down and closure, but I didn't respond. I'm tired, honestly. I don't care about talking to her, and I honestly don't think I have to justify making an anonymous post on Reddit to sort through what was a difficult time for me. What struck me most is that, according to the cousin, who I honestly feel was in contact with the ex while talking to me, was more offended at what commenters said than what I did. She couldn't pick out a single thing I lied about. Not one. But, I don't care. I've already blocked her cousin. I've done nothing wrong. And I don't think I have to justify anything I've said or done, least of all to her. Edit. Thank you all for the support you have given me. These last few months, this community has been among my most resolute supporters, giving me strength with your own stories of betrayal and perseverance. Even some of the harsher advice was incredibly useful to me. I truly believe, if I had every last one of you in my ear a year ago, I'd have been spared so much pain that I now believe in part was self-inflicted. You're the best. One of the best things I ever did for myself was ask you all for help, when I couldn't tell anyone else. He must rise above it, and don't play this game. He should continue his healing process. No engagement with her or anyone on her side. It's not his fault the internet isn't always anonymous. He should focus on your healing and happiness, and moving on to less toxicity.